Graphing Linear Equations, The Slope, with me, Catherine. What is the slope of a line? Depending on the industry, slope is also called grade, incline, gradient, main fall, pitch, or rise. I'm sure that you've seen these pictures before. Mathematically, slope is the amount a line moves vertically, that's up or down, for each amount a line moves horizontally, that's left or right. Let me show you what that means. The slope equals the vertical movement up or down for every horizontal movement left or right. Let's pick these two points. The first thing I need to do to figure out the slope between these points is I'm going to go up or down. Well, in this case, I have to go up to get to the next point, and I'm actually going up four. Then I have to go to the right. I'm actually going to the right seven. So how can we translate that into numbers? That means I'm going positive four or plus four, and then positive seven or plus seven. Of course, a positive over a positive is just a positive. So we could say the slope is four sevenths. What if I picked two different points on this line? Well, guess what? They're still gonna have the same slope. I'm still gonna be going up four, and I'm still gonna go to the right seven. Every two points on this line will have the exact same slope. Let's try to figure out the formula. Well, we know the slope is up or down or left to right. That means we're gonna move on the y-axis, that's up or down, over how we move on the x-axis, that's left or right. In math, we don't say move on the y-axis, we would say the change. And for the x-axis also in math, we don't say move on, we would say change. We also have a really cool symbol, this triangle symbol. That means the change in y over the change in x. And it all means the same thing. The mathematical formula for slope, this is the one we're gonna use. Let's first start with what we know. The change in y over the change in x. Let's look at our graph. The change in y, well what we could do is we could take negative six minus minus negative two. Then the change in x is going to be negative seven minus zero. We're trying to figure out the distance. When we do six minus a negative two, we end up with negative four, and negative seven minus zero is negative seven. I know what you're thinking, wait a second, negative four, negative seven? But remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. How can we translate this into a formula? Here we go. What we do is we subtract the y's over subtracting the x's. We have two points here. Remember, that's negative six minus negative two over negative seven minus zero. If we think about that, that's the same thing as taking the second y minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. And guess what? That's our equation. Yeah, it took a little bit to get there, but I wanted to make sure you understood what we were doing. Before we get too far, there are four possible solutions for the slope. The first possibility is that our slope could be positive. That means our line goes up from the left to the right. Here's an easier way to think about it. Here's our yodeler guy. He's climbing up in the positive direction. We could also have a negative slope. That means our line goes down when we go from left to right. Here's our yodeler guy. And notice he was going down. Another possibility is the zero slope. Once again, our yodeler guy. This guy isn't going up or down, he's just going straight. So that's zero. And finally, we have the undefined slope. Oh my goodness. Here's our yodeler guy. Ooh, yeah, um, he goes, well, crashing. 
the end of fine slope is straight up and down. So let's figure out what is the slope of a line. So let's take two points. Here's my first one. We're going to call that x1, y1. Here's my second one. We're going to call that x2, y2. Now what we're going to do is substitute in what we know. We're going to take y2, which is 1. We're going to subtract y1, which is 6. Then we're going to take x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is negative 4. And now all we have to do is figure it out. 1 minus 6 is negative 5, and 5 minus a negative 4 is 9. That's cool. Let me draw the line. How do we get negative 5 over 9? That means we go down 5 on the y, and then write 9, which is the same thing as positive 9. Awesome! In math, we're going to stop using the word down and right. We're going to start saying we're going to rise negative 5 and run 9. Yep, slope is the same thing as rise over run. Let's try another one. Here's my first point, x1, y1. And here's my second point, x2, y2. Now we're going to substitute in what we know. We're going to take y2 minus y1. And then we're going to take x2 which is the 7, minus x1, which is negative 7. 2 minus a negative 4 is 6. 7 minus a negative 7 is 14. Let's draw my line. You're going to notice that I rise 6 and then run 14. But 6 over 14 also reduces. 2 goes into both of them. So if I cancel out my common factor of 2, I end up with 3 sevenths. And guess what? That also works! Let me show you. From the first point, I'm going to rise 3 and then run 7. And guess what? I'm on the line again! So every time I rise 3 and run 7, I'm going to get on the line? Yes! Let's do it! Rise 3, run 7, and there we are at the line again. I know, this is crazy! Let's try another one. Here's my first point, x1, y1, and here's my second point, x2, y2. Let's do the formula. We're going to take y2 minus y1, all right, and then we're going to take x2 minus x1. 5 minus 5 is 0, and 7 minus a negative 6 is 13. Anytime we have zero over a number, that actually turns out to be zero. And when we draw our line, if we remember, the slope isn't going anywhere. It's straight across. So that gives us a zero slope. Let's look at one more. Here's my first dot, x1, y1. And here's my second dot, or my second order pair, x2, y2. Let's do the formula. So we're going to take y2 minus y1, and then we're going to take x2 minus x1, all right? So negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12. 3 minus 3 is 0. Let's draw this picture. Hopefully you remember from the yodeler guy, that means this is an undefined slope. Now here's your turn to practice. You're going to find the slope for each ordered pair. I would like you to pause the lesson, figure it out, then press play to check. Okay, let's see how you did. The first thing I like to do is label my points. So I have x1, y1, and x2, y2. Here's my formula. Hopefully you remember that I like to put parentheses around my variables. Let's put in what we know. 7 is y2, 9 is y1, 2 is x2, and 3 is x1. Let's subtract. 7 minus 9 is negative 2, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. 
So m is 2. That's my slope. Let's look at number 2. The first thing I did was label them. Here's my formula. Now let's substitute. Here's my y2. Here's my y1. Here's my x2. And here's my x1. Let's subtract. 6 minus 2 is 4. And negative 4 minus a negative 4 is 0. This is crazy. We can't divide by 0. So that means this is an undefined slope. Let's look at number 3. I labeled them. And here's my formula. Let's substitute. y2 is negative 3. y1 is 1. x2 is 0. x1 is negative 7. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. 0 minus a negative 7 is 7. We could write it as negative 4 sevenths. That's our slope. Here's the self quiz. You're going to for sure pause the video, find the slope for each problem without peeking, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. The first thing I like to do is to rewrite my formula. And then I like to put parentheses around every variable. Let's substitute. Here's y2 minus y1. Here's x2 minus x1. 5 minus 3 is 2. And 0 minus a negative 1 is 1. 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. So the slope for this line is 2. Let's look at problem number 2. Here's my formula. And then I put parentheses around each variable. We're going to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 9 minus 2 is 7. Negative 3 minus a negative 1 is negative 2. We like to rewrite it with a negative sign in the front. So the slope for this line is negative 7 halves. Let's look at number 3. Here's my equation. Here's my parentheses so I can substitute. We're going to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Negative 8 minus 0 is negative 8. Negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So the slope for this line is 8 thirds. Let's look at our last one. Here's my formula. And here are my parentheses where I'm going to substitute in my numbers. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Negative 4 minus a negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 8 minus 6 is negative 14. Always want to reduce. Negative 2 over negative 14 reduces to 1 7th. Thanks for watching. Did you know there are video guides and worksheets available for all the Pi Crustable Lecture Series? There sure are. Make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss the new videos. I love this stuff. Do you have a request? Let me know at piecrustable at gmail.com or in the YouTube comment box below. Thanks for joining and I hope you'll come back for another awesome math video.